way we consume and share news today, it is largely rooted in social media outlets, a reason why it's crucial to look at what's being discussed online. Like, if the cicadas are coming in billions, <laughs> we should take notice. We're joined by Erica in the studio. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. I saw the headlines over the week and I thought, do I want to open up this article? I- inevitably, it will show me videos and videos of cicadas. And yes, their swan song is sad, but if they come in droves, oh, I'm not too excited about we're it. We're talking about a l- lot. <laughs> like apocalyptically a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to it in just a moment, but we have a few, I guess, entertainment headlines to cover first. Uh, we we like to report on celebrities doing good, especially when it's of this scale. I had no idea. Yeah. So um, we we're talking about Park Jin Young mm-hmm. uh, of JYP this mm-hmm. morning, and uh, he has uh, been in the headlines for, well, his spirit of generosity okay. and also leadership. Um, and uh, it turns out that uh, he has donated uh, two billion won over the last two years, oh. which amounts to around one point uh, five. Five, Five, yeah, uh, million dollars. So his journey of uh, giving uh, started in 2022 when he made a significant donation of 500 million won to World Vision. Uh, the money contributed to the medical expenses of uh, vulnerable communities all around the world. Uh, the contribution earned him a spot in the World Vision Bob Pierce Honor Club. Okay, so his altruism really didn't stop there. In fact, no. it was infectious he inspired others to step in and yeah. he also continued to give back that's right so in the same year we're still in 2022 he donated another 500 million won uh, each to World Vision and Samsung Seoul Hospital mm-hmm. to support sick children uh, around the world so that's where his heart goes that's right mm-hmm. and last year uh, he donated an additional 10 billion won uh, distributed in 2 billion won uh, increments mm-hmm. to 5 key regional hospitals here in Korea, um, you know, his sort of like philanthropic spirit inspired other JYP <laughs> artists to follow suit. And this is where you really um, see, uh, you know, the, the, the true power mm. of, uh, you know, how just one action inspires a whole string of actions, mm. you know, um, it, it's really inspiring. Sometimes we forget it starts with one act yes. of kindness and it doesn't have to come in billions of wands of no. donation and how it can inspire people people around you. Yes. Uh, it, it doesn't just celebrate the generosity of Pak Tinyang, but also serves as a call to action for others. Yes. Uh, it reminds us of maybe the profound impact collective contributions mm. can have in addressing these global challenges, including but not limited to helping children at uh, today's Earth Day. That's helping right. Helping the Earth. Yep. Things like that. Mm. So just to mention a few names, uh, Stray Kids uh, member Felix joined uh, the emergency relief efforts for the Syria-Turkey earthquake mm. in February of 2023 with a donation of 50 million won to World Vision. Uh, fellow member Rino uh, continued to pay it forward by contributing 100 million won mm. to World Vision's global food crisis response earlier this year in January um, with the donation of Rino being became the youngest member to join World Vision's Bob ah, Pierce Honor Club. Now, additionally, Stray Kids, Changbin and Hyunjin made their marks by donating to The Promise for Syria-Turkey Earthquake Emergency Relief last year. Mm. Uh, they also subsequently joined the Honors Club as the group's second and third members, mm. respectively. Um, that's not all, actually. And Nayeon uh, from TWICE and uh, Ryu Jin from ITZY have also made significant significant contributions themselves. Um, and uh, JYP says uh, it plans to continue its uh, social contribution mm. projects uh, together with its artists and also fans around the world this year and moving forward, of course. Sometimes I have to sort of refocus my jaded heart. I know. Uh, right? And focus on the good. Yeah. It's tough. I think the more you know, the more confusing it gets. Mm-hmm. And you start to question, you know, because... Uh, I think not to undermine the story, but 
you know, I, I think charity organizations coming under fire for not being transparent enough. I know. But that's besides the point, yep. perhaps, right? I mean, you can do good, mm. small or big. Yes. And it's contagious, apparently. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to our second uh, buzzword of the day. Chon Yeom-mu topping the list of most TV appearances <laughs> in South Korea. Surprise? No. Like, not at you all. You literally see him everywhere. Yeah, I was flipping through the <laughs> channel over the weekend yeah. and giving Korean TV a try because I realized all of my <laughs> content was coming from social media yeah. and, and streaming sites. And I was like, that's great. But what's happening on, you know, TV yeah. channels here? And every other channel, I kid you not, it was that's Chun right. and you just saw That's Chun right. Yeah. yeah. Um, Bangnare is another name. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> Anyways, let's uh, mention some of these names, shall we? So last year in 2023, former TV announcer and current TV personality Chun Yeon Moo appeared in a record 21 TV shows. And we're talking about regular appearances here, not just a guest, you know, one off guest appearance. <laughs> um, he was the most frequently seen celebrity across all all TV shows here in South Korea. Mm. Uh, the analysis includes data from non-dramatic, non-drama TV programs, including mm. pilot shows that aired last year. Mm. Um, after Tony Yeon Moo, comedian Tang Do Yeon, and uh, how how can we label him? Boom! He he's a he's a rapper, singer. He's a yeah. He's an MC. He's a radio DJ. I, I now that you mention it, um, a long time ago he made his debut as a as a singer. I forgot. God. Yeah, I just I conveniently forgot. I think back in the late nineties, he debuted under like the group Key. <laughs> the things yes. you remember. Anyways, multi entertainer. <laughs> let's call him that way. <laughs> Boom. Well, they were regulars on seventeen TV shows okay. each. Uh, Kim Song Ju, mm -hmm. who also used to be a, a TV announcer as yeah. well, he made regular appearances on fifteen TV shows. Mm -hmm. um, most of the TV personalities. Now, this is where we get to the interesting part. Most of the TV personalities who had multiple TV gigs were in their forties or fifties. Do you think it caters to the primary audience that still watch TV? I think so. That's definitely one of the reasons. One of the reasons. Yeah. and and they're seasoned. Uh, you know veterans. So, yes. you know, I, I think they hit the sweet spot between engaging with a larger audience. Yeah, that's right. E exactly. The younger and the older yeah. uh, audience members. Now, this data was analyzed by Good Data Corporation, which took into account a total of 431 TV shows mm -hmm. broadcast across 39 channels. Now, these shows spanned uh, current affairs, culture, mm -hmm. entertainment, and featured uh, a total of 8,319 wow. performers in total. Uh, the shows actually excluded sports and music countdown shows. Okay. Now, although it's hard to compare directly with the early aughts or 2000s, there seems to be a noticeable shift towards older TV personalities in recent years. And let's try to explain the mm. reasons for the trend as we alluded to, right? Yeah. So Good Data Corporation speculates that the trend towards older TV personalities could be uh, due to a lack of uh, younger talent mm. that are capable of uh, leading television yeah. shows, or perhaps the older talent still manages to, ha you know, appeal to the younger viewers. I think we want a grounded TV personality, yeah. especially to host live shows. Have you seen Kim Song Joo handle those live, like you know, uh, especially competition shows? Yeah. His cue card had two lines. I know he went on for five minutes. Exactly. Uh, there, there are lots of uh, variables. Yeah. and unexpected uh, twists, and turns. twists and turns that you have to be able to cover. And I think really uh, only seasoned hosts uh, <laughs> can do that, pull that kind of thing off. E even they struggle and yeah. it's it's barely enough to get through. So could you imagine a young newbie doing it? It's it's just, it just need a little you bit know, more experience. It would be, you know, they, they would yeah. be flustered. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it would be difficult to yeah. keep a straight face and, you know, that sort of calm demeanor, right? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Anyways. <laughs> additionally, uh, the aging TV audience mm. uh, might also influence, like you mentioned, uh, the prevalence of uh, older celebrities on TV because the younger viewers mm. uh, are switching mm. to online streaming services and also YouTube. I really have to make an effort to try to, you know, <sighs> ensure that I watch a mm. variety of contents. It takes effort. You know, it's been a really long time since I watch television. I watch everything it's, on YouTube these days. I've got to say, it's kind of hard yeah. because we're conditioned by YouTube standards That's where right. I can search 
search for what I want to watch right. as opposed to TV. You just let it flow, right? And it's... <laughs> you know, the only time I watch television is yeah. when I go visit my parents. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> the age gap, yep. the culture gap. It's yeah. very real. <laughs> and I think the only reason I conscientiously do it is mm. just to be sure I'm not really missing out on right. anything. Right. But it's hard. <laughs> All right, on to that story that we mentioned at the top of the segment. It's maybe your worst nightmare if you hate bugs. The cicadas oh, are yeah. coming, like in droves. We're talking about tens of billions of cicadas uh, that are said to sort of like crawl out from under the ground Lovely. in the coming weeks. Um, now, it's going to be a rare, a very rare synchronized event. Uh, a, the last similar event happened 221 years ago. Um, yeah. Oh. Anyway, cicadas are expected to appear across where? Well, the Midwest and southeast of the United States starting in early May. Do all cicadas spend a fixed number of years underground before coming to a surface to take part in a mating ritual? You know what? Why is this happening? I'm not a bug expert, and I <laughs> thought all cicadas spent a fixed number of years yeah. underground, yeah. but uh, it appears not. I mean, thousands of cicada species can be found all around the world. Okay, hold up. Thousands yeah, of cicada thousands species. Thousands of species okay. of cicadas, but periodical cicadas are distinct because okay. they spend most of their lives underground. They feed on tree roots. Mm. And then after either 13 or 17 years, depending on the brood of the cicadas, uh, they crawl up to the surface to begin a, a busy month-long search for a mate. Okay, you said this hasn't happened in 221 years, right? This like synchronized event? Yeah, synchronized event where more than one brood of cicadas uh, crawl up to the surface to mate. So what's different about the phenomenon <laughs> unfolding this year? Yeah. So this year's event is unusual because these two different broods of cicadas, brood 18 and brood 19, are syncing up. And also because they happen to be adjacent to one another uh, with a, a narrow area of geographical overlap in central Illinois. My brother is in central Illinois. Oh, really? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so he's definitely going to be hearing about this. Now, according to experts, there aren't many places in the United States where two very different broods overlap. Mm -hmm. Now, this year's emergence is expected to be also unusually large. Uh, some experts estimate that more than a trillion cicadas could blanket parts of the U.S. <sighs> where these two broods overlap. Literally shuddering. Yeah, trillion cicadas. I don't even know what that looks like to me. It looks like the end of the world. It looks <laughs> biblical. It, it's scary. Yeah, it's scary. <laughs> Three I'm sorry, trillion cicadas. Uh, yeah. All right. I mean, just for the record, cicadas are harmless to humans, right. uh, but their loud, very recognizable mating sounds can be a nuisance <laughs> for regular people like us. Um, forget sleep, people of central yeah. Illinois, but it, it must also be a big deal for bug enthusiasts yeah. because I've seen in certain interviews people are actually excited for the event yeah this is a very 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 big deal for bug enthusiasts so this is going to be a once in a lifetime opportunity to experience the two cicada broods uh, emerging together the last event occurred in 1803 when thomas jefferson was american <laughs> president yeah. it's something that no one alive today <laughs> has ever seen and no one alive today will ever see again okay so in that sense it, it's worth taking no of. Yeah. It's it, it's on me. It feels like it's on me, Erica. <laughs> <laughs> uh, expect to see to 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 see this news, uh, you know, in in the coming days. Okay. Photos. All right. All right. Yeah. Our listeners are asking, where can I find more information? Uh, just type Online in cicadas. cicadas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or trillions of cicadas. That's one way to go. <laughs> Thanks, Erica. Pleasure. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. <laughs> If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.